Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. Today I will be showing you the top 9 items that were added to ArcGIS Pro 3.3. In this release, we added a variety of new features focusing on both innovation and ArcMap equivalency. These include presentations, flood simulation, symbolizing unique value classes by attributes, and many more. With an advanced license, you can now perform dynamic flood simulation in 3D views. To find an area of interest, set the parameters, and run the scenario. Shallow water equations are used to calculate where water flows and accumulates. Each scenario is stored in a simulation layer in the scene, and each can contain additional elements, such as channels, water source points, and barriers. Try different parameters to compare what-if scenarios and test mitigation plans. Symbolize the water by depth or flow rate. You can load initial water onto the scene and contain water within an area of interest. Export the results to raster data for additional workflows like sharing maps, making temporal profile graphs, and visualizing results. Presentations provide pages that you can customize to display maps in full screen. There are four page types, maps, blank pages, and image and video pages. It is managed in the catalog like other project items. All pages can have additional text, images, and shapes added to build the story and help highlight key aspects. Activate a map page and make new pages from it by clicking the Insert New Page button. Control layer visibility and save the changes. You can provide a transition effect to customize the experience as you move between pages. In full screen, you can explore map pages as well as view pop-up information for your features. Share the presentation as a PDF, video, or images of each page. PDFs are now supported as raster layers. When adding a PDF to the map, there are options such as which page to display, the resolution in DPI, which is optional, and the color mode. Once the layer is added, you can interact with it just like any raster layer. For example, on the Imagery tab, click GeoReference and GeoReference the layer so the features match up with the base map. Save it with the PDF or as a new image. Password-protected PDFs are supported as well. The Export Attachments tool exports all attachments with their original file names to an output folder. Optionally, exported attachments can be grouped together into subdirectories using a subdirectory field. To rename exported attachments, choose an option from the Name Format drop-down menu. Choose Field Values Only to replace original field names. Choose Add Field Values as prefix or suffix to append field value names to original file names. Hyperlinks are now supported in Layouts. For this layout, I'd like to add a link to the ArcGIS Online page where I got the map data. I can paste the URL directly and a hyperlink will automatically be created. If I don't want to display the URL, I can use the hyperlink button on the text tab or the Ctrl K keyboard shortcut to open the hyperlink window and add display text. When I hover over the link, I can see the full URL. Use Ctrl click to open the link. Hyperlinks are also preserved when exporting the PDF. The Convert Schema Report Geoprocessing tool allows for conversion of an existing JSON or Excel schema report to another format or to an XML workspace document. This allows schema edits made within the report to be imported to newly created geodatabases. To demonstrate this, we'll open an existing Excel schema report and make some changes. 
Schema information such as field order, alias, default values, domain assignment, and subtype configuration can be edited on each feature class's individual Excel worksheet. Once the changes have been finalized, the edited report can be converted using the geoprocessing tool. Provide the report to be converted, provide a location and name for the output, and select the output format. To create a new geodatabase for your report, select XML as the output. Once converted, XML outputs can be imported to a new geodatabase using the Import XML Workspace Document geoprocessing tool. Changes made in the Excel report will be present in the new schema. The Time Series Cross Correlation tool compares two time series at each location of a space time cube and calculates the correlation between them. When one time series increases, does the other tend to increase, decrease, or not significantly change? The tool also estimates delayed effects, called time lags, between the two variables, such as the delay between the start of a marketing campaign and an increase in sales revenue. For example, using COVID-19 data, there is a strong positive correlation between counts of COVID cases and counts of COVID deaths. We can also see that COVID deaths lag behind COVID diagnoses by one to two weeks in most states. The output features include time series charts in their pop-ups to see how the two time series align for various time lags. You can also see the original values of the time series or view them after they have been filtered to remove general trends. By viewing the results on a map, the tool can reveal spatial patterns and connections between the time series. You can classify unique value symbology by specifying a size or color variable to combine multiple visualization techniques. This is similar to quantity by category symbology from ArcMap. For example, this point feature layer shows the subspecies of various maple trees in Madison, Wisconsin. In the Symbology pane, on the Vary Symbology by Attribute tab, choose a field from the dataset that provides a variable for size or color. Then click Classify Data. This example modifies the variance and diameter for each subspecies. You can change the type of classification method, the number of classes, and modify the layer's legend type to show symbol classes for each unique value. There have been many enhancements to charts functionality in Pro 3.3. Bar charts now have the option to treat null as a category, allowing you to see how many null values are in a categorical field. You can change the label on the Data tab and change the color on the Series tab. New trendline options have been added to scatter plots. You can see that the relationship between life expectancy and income is not captured well by this linear trendline. A logarithmic trendline is a much better fit for this data. Lastly, if you are using graduated colors or unique value symbology, you can now generate a bar chart based on that layer's symbology properties, which includes labels. Here you can see how many features fall into each symbology class and interactively select individual classes. Those were the top nine items for ArcGIS Pro 3.3. For a full list of everything new in this release, please read the What's New documentation for ArcGIS Pro.